Mr. Branson, thank you so much for joining me today. Now, I'd like to start and go back when you were 15 years old. You decided to leave school, you wanted to start a magazine, and you pretty much dreamt of change in the world. That didn't exactly happen, but you have managed to achieve a lot of things. Are you happy with the way the world is right now? Is it good to you, per se? Well, the, the world is extremely good to me. Um, and I've had uh, the, the most uh, enjoyable life, I think, of anybody anybody I know. Um, and, um, and I'm still, still loving it. Uh, I spend quite a lot of my time now on, uh, on issues like conflict resolution issues in the world. And, um, and obviously, uh, you know, the world, I mean, if you live in Syria today, the, the world is not a happy place at all. Um, and um, we have a wonderful organization called The Elders that are trying to help uh, resolve that conflict. And um, in fact, Lak Brahimi uh, was actually here in Russia yesterday, who's one of the elders. Um, you know, meeting uh, people from Russia to try to try to get agreement as quickly as possible, so that uh, we can uh, uh, spare the, the um, people of Syria any any more misery. And um, and I think if we can get Russia, you know, Russia on board and America on board, we, we and 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 the Syrian government on board, hopefully we can get a, a, get that problem resolved. How does it actually work? Well, the elders are actually um, an organization of 12 people that Nelson Mandela set up um, and uh, they, um, they they have people like President Carter, uh, Nelson Mandela, uh, Kofi Annan, um, Archbishop Tutu, people with high moral authority. and. They work as a, as, a, as, a, as a group to try to resolve conflicts. And then sometimes the individual elders, I mean, Lak de Brahimi has been asked by the United Nations to try to um, you know, work with the various countries involved with Syria to try to, to, try to get this problem resolved. And, um, and uh, so since you asked, am I happy with the world? Obviously, Syria is a miserable place and it needs to be resolved. And, and, um, and, and it should be top priority, I think, of every every uh, every caring politician to get the, to get this problem resolved. Now, of course, there are many casualties in Syria right now, and we've seen for the past couple of months. But you yourself have faced death a number of times, especially on your travels on the hot air balloons across the ocean. What made you do it over and over again? I can imagine it must have been so painful for your family as well. The amount of goodbye notes you probably have written. I always love a challenge. I have great difficulty saying no, and if somebody says, you know. Nobody's flown around the world in a balloon, or uh, or uh, nobody's climbed a mountain, or uh, you know, I just say, well, let, let, let's try. Um, and, it, and I'm sure it, it it wasn't easy for for my family, but now my children are doing it with me. So we just climbed Mont, Mont Blanc, uh, you know, the highest mountain in Europe, a couple of months ago. We just kite surfed together across the English Channel. Uh, we're going into space together. So um, so my children, uh, I think, understand why I like to live life to its full and they're now they're now doing that with me. Is your wife happy with the fact that your children are now doing the exact same thing that you did? I, think, I don't think she's uh, wonderful, wildly happy but she certainly loves seeing her children uh, doing what they want to do and that's uh, I think that's what mothers mothers are for so and, I, and we, we, we try not to take unnecessary risks I mean we we have uh, wonderful exciting challenges but I try to make 100% sure I bring the children home. Now let's go to something a little bit more serious and we're talking about the time when you were editing the magazine and you did that. You started up the magazine trying to stop the war in Vietnam from what I understand. Do you think journalism can actually change the world and the course of things that is happening? Oh I think journalists can certainly change the world and the internet can change the world. I mean uh, it was, um, you know, through the internet and through, through journalism and the public uh, that the Arab Spring happened. I blog on Twitter and Google Plus and um, and Facebook. And the, the if you have an army of followers and you want to try to s sort out a problem in the world, and you get other friends who've got a big influence to do the same, you can sort these problems out. Um, so. You know, I campaign a lot for the oceans and trying to stop people killing sharks in the oceans. And you know, we've got quite a lot of laws changed around the world thanks to, you know, the the the, the, uh, the internet. And um, uh, so, uh, yeah. So, I think journalism is a, and 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 uh, 
and, and the public working on internet, very important. But journalism can go to extremes as well, especially with what we've seen happen with the News International. Where do you think the UK journalism is heading? There's responsible journalism in the UK and there's irresponsible journalism. And, um, and there is, uh, you know, one or two newspapers that are very, ex very sort of extreme in their thinking. Um, and I suspect we need more, I mean, but, but sorry, but the good thing is that the internet is counterbalancing that, I think. Um, and so we used to have a newspaper in England, where well, we still do, called the Daily Mail. It, it's, it really influenced people in a sort of, I think, a slightly negative way. Um, and, um, but I think the internet will hopefully start balancing that at, um, now. And what's your take on the whistleblowers of today? For example, Julian Assange. Do you think he's a hero or a villain? What's your opinion? I would not call him a hero or a, or a villain. I think the, the mistake he made was not editing. Uh, he had in, incredible information. Um, and he could have made um, thousands of great stories without, without putting at life uh, some, people's, you know, some people around the world. And, um, so I think perhaps he just made, he went a bit too far. Generally, I'm all for 100% freedom of the press, but I think in that, in that situation, um, uh, you know, there were definitely, uh, we, we, we had, we're doing a lot of dealings in Zimbabwe, trying to bring about democracy. Um, and then, you know, suddenly we saw, you know, what we were doing and trying to bring about democracy appear, you know, so Robert Mugabe could see it. And you, sometimes you don't want a dictator who is, is being, doing bad things to, find out uh, you know, uh, that other people are trying to bring about democracy and you know, it can put lives in danger. Now your upbringing was definitely much different than your children's upbringing. And if we talk about uh, the youth right now in the UK, do you think they have goals? Because we've seen the riots take place in 2011. What are UK teens like right now? Do you think they're lacking motivation? I think the UK uh, are not as politically minded as they were when in the 60s when I you know so they should have they should have stopped the Iraq war I mean there were big demonstrations there should have been even bigger demonstrations and um, so I think the I think if anything the youth are, uh, are not loud are not loud and not vocal enough in this this generation um, I think that when politicians are going to take take countries to war we've got to stop them doing it, um, it you know wars are easy to start, they're almost impossible to, to, to uh, uh, stop. Uh, they cause so much misery and politicians should be clever enough to get rid of leaders that are uh, leading badly without having to involve millions of people in, in bloodshed and war. Um, I think that, you know, the, the, the young people, there, there, are, there are, is too many people unemployed and I think personally that, all, that nobody should be allowed to be unemployed. I think you can share the jobs that are available, you can share them around with everybody, which might mean that you know, people have you know, a three-day weekend instead of a two-day weekend or whatever. Um, but there is room to make sure that everybody has a job. And I think that would resolve a lot of the problems in the world. A little bit of a general question now. Would you say you are a dreamer, a visionary, or an entrepreneur, or all of that? And in which order then? I dream big, and then I try to make my dreams become reality. Um, so, you know, I dreamt uh, of going to the moon one day and uh, in the end I, I couldn't, decided not to wait for the Russian spaceship company or the American spaceship company and we built, you know, we're building our own spaceships to uh, take us into space. I think everybody should try to dream above what they're capable of and then try, try to catch up with your dreams. And now Virgin Atlantic in particular and everything that happened recently, you lost the bid to EasyJet. I know you're fighting for it from the latest reports that we've seen. What's next? Virgin Atlantic is a really quality airline. It's a fun airline. Um, it also has you know, a, a large business class section. And we think that actually Virgin Atlantic is more the kind of airline that people in Moscow would want to use between London and Heathrow. Um, and that flying from Gatwick uh, in, an, in a quite a very small plane is not such a good idea. So we, we, think that, that we think the Civil Aviation Authority made the wrong decision. But, but obviously the ideal scenario uh, is that you have three carriers flying uh, to, to Moscow. I mean, if Moscow is going to expand and 
uh, if Russia is going to expand, the more, the more airlines you have flying people into this country, the better. So I'm, I'm speaking with, uh, you know, I'm hopefully meeting Prime Minister Medvedev this afternoon, and um, and uh, and we will, I will see if anything can be done, and we'll cross fingers. And there have been a lot of rumours about you being in Russia very often, frequently. Everyone's trying to figure out: Will you be investing in the country? Are there any other projects, perhaps, taking place? Is there anything you can tell us? Well, I mean, today we uh, we're going to be doing a lot in Russia. Today we announced that. Um, that we were going to set up, uh, put a lot, invest a lot of money into trying to reduce people's energy output um, in, 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 in a positive way. That um, so, you know, Russia's had all this oil, and therefore they've never really tried to preserve energy. Um, and if you can preserve energy, uh, then then you can export more oil. So, you know, we're putting two or three hundred million dollars into Russia into trying to. Uh, invest in companies that can come up with good ways of uh, saving energy. But nothing in particular right now that you can mention? Well, that's the Virgin Green Fund, which we're going to start from, from today. Uh, but um, we'll be looking at mobile phones, we'll be looking at uh, quite a lot of other investments as well. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.